to Homecast. Welcome to the Homecast. Today I invited, not invited actually, it's open call. So actually based on the open call, the semester, someone so lovely like replied me to the message and said that they would love to join the podcast. So I will bring the guest now. Welcome. Would you mind to introduce yourself, please? Uh, yeah, hi. I am Liv Patamo. I am a first year fine arts student at Falmouth University with Emma. Uh, and uh, we met on at a gallery, the Miniatures exhibition, because we were helping invigilate together. And Emily was telling me about her project and I was like, oh, that's so interesting. And then Emily was saying about how you're looking for people to come on. And I was like, oh, I'd be happy to. Oh, and now I'm here. So Thank you so much for being my guest. And it's amazing because like I was like a bit panicking because it was my first time doing an open call, really. Oh. So I was like, I'm not sure, like, is it anyone going to be interested to sign up for being a guest for open call and stuff? And I'm like, you just like, hey Emily I would like to do it I was like oh that would be amazing so thank you for coming and yeah straight to the point now what do you bring for us like today what objects you've been bringing to share would you like to introduce about your objects please um so I have with me a golden charm bracelet thing um so basically, uh, I have gained one charm every year of my life from my grandma. Um, my sister has one as well. Hers isn't complete because it's meant to finish when we're 18. So from like when we were born to when we reach adulthood and my sister's younger. So has, she only has 17 at the moment. Um, so basically, my nan bought all these charms, and then every year we got to pick one out. So when we were a baby, it was, I guess, when you just fumble around as a baby and just whichever one we touch first. But then as we got older, we sort of got to pick from the bunch. So mm. they're on in order of what I picked. So the first one is like a little camera and you can open the camera up wow. um, and then inside there's a little lady the second one so when i turn to is a little lobster pot and you can also open the lobster pot up to get the lobster out then That's the th- cute. <laughs> i really like the um interactive ones that you can like open up and actually use yeah Uh, i like the sound as well because like when i was like um because at the moment we're doing like a online meeting so it's like when i hear it's just really interesting because i didn't see the objects that time i'm like over there's like some really like interesting sounds like tinkling it's like what what what's the objects you're going to bring (laughs) lovely (laughs) oh sorry would you like to continue about to describe Uh, the work yeah sure so there's also a tankard cup a oil light a treasure chest that you can open up and it's got treasure on the inside um a little cart a clover a 10 pound note in a box um (laughs) a rag doll there's an apple and you can open the apple up and then inside there's a naked man and woman so i guess that's meant to be adam and eve and the apple from Mm. the bible there's a shell um a little coin with I can't really tell what's on it actually um I think it's someone maybe riding a horse a water mill mm-hmm. a bell and then when you open the bell up there's two people getting married inside an egg a weird gem a cross um I think the cross also opens up but I can't quite because these are really tiny they're like each charm smaller than a nail um <laughs> Okay, inside the cross is just a bunch of dirt. And then finally, there's um, a little heart with a crown. So that's all 18, one for each year, in order from birth 
to yeah my 18th birthday <laughs> oh that is that is so cute though is there like a, a particular one that is your favorite or has mean a lot to you that you want to pick that one maybe would you like to talk about a bit more um i guess i can only really remember picking out the last couple uh when i was younger i liked to pick out the ones that you could open up just because they're a bit more fun um mm. the last one the heart with the crown um uh, was the final one that i picked and i guess sort of having it be like a heart with a crown i felt like i'd sort of i guess when i turned 18 this might sound like really self-absorbed sort of like matured enough to like become a princess of my own heart <laughs> that sounds that so silly cute, though. <laughs> yeah, it's so cute um I think when I got the bell with the people getting married inside that was quite a hard point in my life because that was when I was 14 um and then the two people being married inside are a man and a woman from what we can tell anyway one's buff and masculine and in a suit and the other one's very like feminine and curvy and in a little wedding dress um and for context i identify as a lesbian so when i picked this i was sort of questioning a lot about what it was to I guess be with someone else and who I wanted to be with when I grew up and I've grown up in quite like a Christian family which you might be able to tell from like the apple of Adam and Eve so I guess maybe on some level when I picked it out I was sort of thinking about that yeah well this is actually quite meaningful because like I was grew up in like a Christian family too and then, like, during two, through the time, I define myself, like, I think I define myself when I'm 17, that, like, I'm pansexual. So, like, through the time, it's, like, a really long journey. And also, for, like, a Christian background as well, it's, I think it's struggle somehow because, like, I don't know. I never told, like, the people when I'm in the church. <laughs> and through, like, time to time, I'm still, like, asking myself, like questioning but like I think now I'm quite strong like and I'm 100% sure that I'm sexual like and I'm quite happy who I am now so yeah it's it's mean a lot actually I guess like you have so strong bonding with your grandma as well because like your grandma actually make you like your your sister and you have like a little bracelet as well would you want to tell about like some relationship with your grandma and some of like the story through the places as well? Um, so my I live on the Isle of Wight most of the time for some context. So both of my parents work on the mainland. So a lot of the time they have to go away for like a couple of weeks or they work in other countries and go away for a couple of months. So I guess my grandma is the person who mostly raised me um and she was very christian and she has a lot of beliefs that i don't i guess agree with um and when we were younger she really tried to push these on us so for example i remember my little sister when she was like five she wanted to wear jeans and my grandma was like uh only guys wear jeans and if okay. you wear jeans then you're a boy and that's wrong so which I mean now just sounds ridiculous like everyone <laughs> wears jeans but it's just things like that um but she's always been a I guess support for me like a constant and we don't agree on a lot of things and that I guess does hurt a little bit I mean, she's not going to listen to this. She doesn't know how to use YouTube <laughs> or anything like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, she is sort of the reason that we had to go to church every week. And, like, I don't, 
I guess, regret that. A lot of the stuff they said was quite offensive and harmful. But mm. also, I, for like a couple years with my sister, we ran the Sunday school for the younger children. So then we got to kind of be like, oh, the things they're telling you in the church, like, you have a right to question it. You should just be kind to everyone. Um, and you get to have like lots of interesting conversations, I guess, about people's identities and beliefs. Uh. That's cool, though. Is it um, maybe a bit personal? Are you still going to church or you not really go to church anymore? Um, I am. I definitely would not call myself a Christian. I I sometimes go to church on for something called midnight mass, which is it's like you go at midnight on Christmas Eve and Christmas because mm. my I mean it's kind of fun. It feels like a bit rebellious to mm. go and be up at midnight and be like oh in like a fancy building, but I definitely don't go for any religious reasons. Um, I don't think anyone in my house apart from my nan actually I guess believes in God I mean I'm not saying that it's wrong to be Christian um I agree with quite a lot of the stuff like you know be kind to people donate to charity stuff like that Mm. but I don't personally believe in that yeah I mean I I understand that because I was quite in a similar position through the time like I think because I was been so struggle like three or four years ago so I was been like um having like a big gap at the moment so I didn't really go to church as well it's something like um been questioning and also like I do find something that was not too right because for me like any like you know background of like religions is about love and respect and care but like somehow for time to time like when I was in a church I doesn't find the respect from the people that I know used to and it just really hurt so I definitely having a gap too so I is totally understandable and really I've been a while not good at church so I kind of get it like we're kind of in similar positions to be honest yeah but so um I think like be honest in nowadays because I've been having like lots of friends who are having like lots of like you know different religions background too and I think like they're they're kind of having questioning themselves and try to find themselves as like you know to find their identity and like you know time to time for like who they are so it's actually quite a interesting way because like somehow like I don't know for example like religion sort of guide you to who you are in like something that oh doesn't sound right or something that oh it sounds right to me but that is how you define as who you are in some way so yeah thank you so much for telling me about um your path a little bit and it's lovely to hear the bracelets though it's actually quite nice because I feel like each thing you're picking it is really like cute as well and you keep like open it I was like oh that's really interesting I would like a braces like that too <laughs> um yeah um so I would like to ask your questions what the most important things you have learned in your life what was your life like before you're learning it and what was your life like after learning it um I think definitely up there I don't know if it's if I could say it's the most important thing but um just sort of like being able to be patient with yourself and with other people um in just all regards like maybe it takes you five more minutes to get out of bed or like an extra couple weeks to learn something or just anything really like being in a place where you're happy with yourself can take a lot of time and there's not always a need to rush it um because I feel like before I sort of came to this realization I really wanted to be the best at what I was doing and the best person I could be like 
right then, right there. And I feel like I missed quite a lot of stuff because of that. Like, oh, I really wanted to be able to understand everything in my math lessons, like, by the end of the week. Um, but then if you sort of push yourself and rush too much and expect more than is reasonable, I found that I sort of, like, I guess missed out on just, like, the fun of the process. And then also, if you don't get to where you want to be in that time frame or, like, as quickly as you want, then it can feel really disappointing when you've set, like, too high expectations for yourself. And then I guess the same when looking at other people. Um, and now I feel like I can kind of recognise when I need to take some time to relax or be like, it's OK if I'm not there right now because I know that if I really want it, I'm going to get there eventually. That's such a really good thought because, I mean, to be honest, I, for me, like a home cuts is actually for me to processing and also to learn from each other as well because um, I definitely f really agree with you, like being patient and, you know, sometimes like I'm a person that really pushing myself and really want to be like, you know, quite ambitious in some of my work too and I just wish like okay I want to do that I want to do that but sometimes you know it's overwhelming it's like really stress out for yourself too so it's a really good point that you be patient and understand that like it's okay to not working on now but like at some point you can be able to achieve with your goal and this is really important and sometimes because like I think like I guess nowadays people always have like quite high expectations and, and I, I can't say like to anyone but like to myself I always have like expectation on myself because I always wish like to be the best of myself to try and work hard with everything but sometimes like I think it's drawn my energy so much and it's like after that I get so sick and then it's just like okay I need to focus on my mental health I need to know that it's okay to have a break and that's it absolutely like a thing that I feel maybe the audience when they listen to it they may feel like the same path that like sometimes you know working so hard and then like start to like I don't know pushing yourself too much and actually like it can be worse sometimes so it's like a balance point too and yeah that is actually quite a good because I think like everyone should remember to learn from yourself as well and actually take time to process and is that actually that is the right things to push yourself so maybe sometimes slow down it's not a bad thing Stu. Thank you so much. <laughs> so there's another question so what makes you feel inspired or like your best of yourself? Um. I feel like I'm really inspired and feel great just giving and receiving like really small but meaningful acts of just like kindness and appreciation so uh, an example I can think of is my one of my friends went into my studio at night after I'd already gone home with a bunch of tiny little soot sprites from like um, my neighbor Totoro <laughs> and they hid them all over like my desk and in my like pencil pots and like toolkits and between my papers and I mean they said oh they only cost me like three pounds and it only took me like 10 minutes but to me it was so heartwarming and it just meant the whole world and I was like, oh, this is why, this is why we live, <laughs> just for the moments like this and being able to do small things like this for other people. And I don't know, it's just so, I guess, easy if we really think about it to take a moment to be nice. And I feel like you've also spoken about this when we first met, how you just want to be kind to other people. <laughs> and that notion is just so, oh. It's just so lovely. It makes me really want 
to just live and create and be happy and make others happy. Oh, that was so cute. Oh my god, I got tears. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite easy to get emotions. So like, yeah, I mean, it's just such a like a gift, you know. And people like remember tiny little things, or sort of like they thought, oh, it's nothing. But it's something because like your little actions it can mean like a lot to some people it might be not to everyone but you can be like a ton little care from the actions it can be like something that you know when people maybe in that moment like it's like I, I feel so depressed or so, I was so down and like someone just actually give me something it's not like it, maybe it's not even something it's like a text it can be mean a lot because when I'm going through with depression times I was actually like that and I was like that is such a game it's like made me feel like that's how I live for too so I can definitely understand the way that you're saying and you know don't think like uh, I hope like audience can reconsider as well like don't think like a little little things just mean nothing it can mean a lot to someone and a little action it can mean a lot so you know if you're like recently find your friend was in a not a good position maybe just text the person give a hug it can mean a lot to them and somehow it can save someone's life too so I just think it's a really good point to just share a little love of course put yourself priority to make sure you're okay first and take care to someone because you need to love yourself to love someone so it's a really good way to express someone feeling too I feel like you're really good at practicing what you preach because for example you sent me uh, like a little cat video the other day and I was feeling really down and then I saw it and I was like that's so sweet that you saw that and thought of me oh thank you so much <laughs> I, I didn't expect because like um go yeah, back to like a while ago now we're like um, having in individuating in the Grace Rift Gallery time for the exhibitions. And during that time, like we have like the same thing. It's like we love cats so much. <laughs> and then I was like, yeah, I need to send that to you. I was like, it's so cute. And then I mean I'm glad you made your day feel a bit better. You know, that's all, like a little thing, but maybe it's make mean a lot to you. So, you know, it's good. I'm so glad. Um yeah, I mean like if if a chance would you like to tell the audience like um some like maybe share like something that like to tell them you wish like you know beforehand or like tell the audience that like oh maybe you should do that something like a fight maybe um I feel like I am maybe too I'm still very young I'm probably quite naive uh so maybe this advice isn't the best um but I feel like especially when it comes to your identity you have to take experiences you have and try and question them and grow from them and then if it's one that is I guess negatively impacting you to recognize that it's not it doesn't define you it's not your fault um you can always grow you can be who you want um so like for example going to a christian school and then being openly out a lot of the guys were quite <laughs> i guess lewd about it and i was like oh okay is this who i'm gonna be now i'm gonna be someone who's not attracted to guys but is like just in something for guys to fetishize um mm. and then for a while I was like okay the male gaze is inescapable this is going to be my life but that is definitely not true and all I really had to do was be like I don't need to let other people and their views define who I am <laughs> I mean it's so cool what do you mean I mean like it's amazing it's not naive honestly like 
anyone giving suggestion is amazing because like in different stage you learn differently and something that may be like in different stage that is like mean a lot to you and it's really personal and this is mean a lot to me too because again like I do like sort of interview with different people and different age too like you know they learn with different things and everyone have like really interesting like perspective and you know something that like I don't expect it so it's amazing and also you know you hit the point that actually I was think it's really like I strongly agree because it's like be yourself is really important I feel like nowadays like you know internet is like being like I don't know being increased everyone have their own phone and people like some people can be quite judgmental in social media and sometimes people can take it like really personally too so and it happens to like have mental health issues so somehow like actually being yourself is really important and I mean, take people's suggestion is important too, but also I think you don't need to like people to judge you to be who you are because that's who we are and like they don't have the right to be. So it's it's a really good point and thank you so much because like um I think at the moment like most of my episode I feel like people definitely like find themselves like being being a police or in the past or like maybe like they don't really care about how people comment themselves. And sometimes, like, um, really scared people being like so judgmental, or like people just saying like, "Oh, you are like that." They're just being judging. So it's important to, you know, just like to learn, or even like listen to someone else's like opinion that like it's okay to be yourself, and it's nothing to be like wrong, and it's good. So thank you so much. <laughs> It's, it's it's so cool I mean like it, I really thanks bro and really appreciate like you being my guest and it's amazing because like you've got such a like soft you know kindness vibe to me like when I first met you as well and it's amazing and so glad you like come to my home car oh I'm honestly so honored to be here you're kind <laughs> of like being like uh, a mentor for our year and sort of like looking at your work in your studio space and all the advice you've given me I mean <laughs> you're kind of just like a yeah you're also I was like oh my gosh Emily's so kind how can one person be so nice <laughs> <laughs> oh thank you so much I just actually remember I was a mentor you just like actually put oh yeah I was a mentor <laughs> All right, thank you so much. I'm going to um, finish it now and I hope everyone enjoyed it and I will see you guys very soon. Thank you.